want to know how I got this scar? Gunbroker. I got I got it from Gunbroker. I have a crippling gun broker addiction. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? As many of you have correctly pointed out in the background of my desk videos and such, yes, I have picked up a Scar 17S. Just in time, in fact, for Garantham to shit all over it. Figuratively, of course. Or literally, you don't know. But yes, the results of Garantham's ice test video uh, has Scar 17 owners all over the internet on suicide watch, throwing their guns in the trash or up for sale despite still having performed better than a lot of Gucci AR-15s. But the FN SCAR-17 has still been a wishlist gun for me for a long time. I know a lot of people recognize this from Call of Duty, a bunch of other video games, movies, whatever. It's just a really iconic gun, 308 battle rifle. Um, and I, I don't know, it's just something that was always out of my price range. Till now, I finally bit the bullet, I picked one up. So we're gonna put her through her paces and find out, does the SCAR heavy actually suck? God, I forgot how much I love this fucking rifle. Now, of course, my heart belongs to the 7.62x39, but 7.62x51 is the guy she told you not to worry about. Battle rifles are just fucking neat. So with this video, I'm gonna give you my impressions on the SCAR-17, spoiler alert, I kinda like them. We're gonna compare the edge that you get from a battle rifle like this in 308 over what you get in like a, a typical 5.56, something like that. And we're also gonna get all up in the nerdy guts about what makes a SCAR a SCAR, because a lot of you guys look at this and you just see kind of like a, a Gucci AR-15. It couldn't be farther from the truth. The SCAR is kind of its own animal and it's really fucking cool. And uh, I know I like when I get into a lot of that nerdy shit, kind of tell you the details of like, you know, the inner, the gunsmithing, the how, how guns work. And I know a lot of you guys are interested in that too. And that's why for a lot of you guys wanting to get into the gunsmithing world and kind of get into firearm design, uh, that's why we tell you guys about SDI, who also happens to be the sponsor of this video. If you're not sure where to start out in the firearms world, SDI or Sonoran Desert Institute is a great place to start. So I'm gonna leave the links down in the description in the pinned comment if you guys wanna check them out. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the SCAR. So the SCAR-17 is a semi-automatic battle rifle in 308. Battle rifle, of course, you know, being kind of like a term for uh, heavier caliber weapons that still kind of fit in that fighting rifle uh, kind of territory. Not like a bolt-action sniper, sniper rifle, but like a semi-automatic rifle in a heavier caliber like 308 or 65 Creedmoor. That's where you find shit like the SCAR Heavy, uh, the FAL, the G3. A capable semi-auto or select fire rifle in a caliber that has a little bit more bite to it. The SCAR in general is known for a lot of things, one of them being, of course, 50 shades of FDE here. But it's also known for being a fairly light recoiling gun, despite being in 308. As you saw, this gun is actually very comfortable to shoot, doesn't really beat me around a, a whole lot. Uh, and it's a, it's a great 308, you know, semi-automatic rifle with 20 round magazines. Did you hear that, YouTube? It's 20, 20 round. Um, 20 round magazines. We are being fully compliant with the new AdSense guidelines. I have an ACOG coming for this one because, you know, all SCARs just deserve an ACOG, but right now we're running a Crimson Trace Rad Optic. Uh, I like these little optics. Uh, they're just a neat little red dot. I think they're kind of neat, and uh, I, I think they're, they're rad, even. But before we get into the nerdy shit on the SCAR, we're going to go ahead and compare 308 to 556 to see what you really gain by going from something like, say, the AR-15 or the SCAR Light, or the SCAR-16, which is in 556, to the SCAR Heavy or the SCAR-17S like we have here. Now, to demonstrate the energy of a 5.56, you might think that we would use an AR-15. Um, if you think that, you're probably new here. And if you are new here, feel free to subscribe. We do cool shit like this all the time. It's a neat party, and we'd love to have you in it. 
yes, this you may recognize from a couple videos ago is that milled SAM-5 Arsenal 5.56 gun that I showed off a good bit ago. As you can see, we've done a lot of improvements to the gun, uh, put, you know, of course, the Zeneco stuff all over it, uh, the JMAC muzzle brake. I'm really kind of excited to shoot it now because uh, between the weight of the Zenit, the brake, everything, uh, should be a very flat shooting gun, especially, you know, it's 5.56 anyway. It's not like it's got fucking crippling recoil. Oh yeah, this thing doesn't fucking move. <laughs> this is great. I like this. Although I do know now, uh, after those first few shots, this EOTech is horrifically not zeroed. Now to be demonstrating energy, we're gonna be doing our patented White Claw penetration test. Is this the best way to show the difference between 5.56 and 308? Absolutely not, but it is my favorite. Celebrating white girl winter in three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that did it. Now to the surprise of absolutely no one, uh, it penetrated all five. Uh, so we got a couple on the ground over here and it just absolutely ripped through. Um, that is because five, five, six is pretty fucking spicy. It's just a very fast projectile. Well, it may not have a lot of weight to it. Uh, it does rip out at uh, roughly like uh, about 3000 feet per second through this carbonated beverage with thin aluminum cans. It really wasn't an even comparison. So while 308 is slightly slower than 556, doesn't quite break the 3000 foot per second range. Uh, it also carries about three times more mass. So what I'm trying to get at here is that when this baby hits over 88 miles an hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. All right, probably looking identical to the 5.56, except a little more splash and hits the dirt harder in three, two, one. Okay, I, I was wrong. That actually demonstrated the, uh, the energy pretty well. I got sprayed by a fountain of, I don't know, Staticky white cloth flavor. You know, honestly, we usually try to clean up the range a little bit. We try to, you know, take it easy. You know, we thank the Black Rifle guys for, for having us out here and let us do what we do and everything on their range. <laughs> Not a whole lot to clean up on that one. There's little, like, scraps of white cloth. We're, we'll do the best we can, but... Yeah, that was... It was great, that muzzle flash looked fantastic. All right, so now let's do a quick breakdown of the SCAR-17 itself here. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, yes, we are running steel, she runs steel fantastic, and therefore, she can deserve the brass. So immediately, one of the advantages you have on SCAR-17 over like an AR-15 system is that you don't have a buffer tube because everything is contained up here in this monolithic aluminum extruded upper here. So everything is contained here, which means you can actually have an integrated folding stock. Sorry, I'm bleeding on the rifle here. I cut my hand on one of those fucking white claw cans, which is like the most embarrassing entry you can have. Yeah, stock folds nice and tight, unlike the AR-15s where you have, you know, a buffer tube. Uh, this one, uh, if you're so inclined, you can actually fire it folded. Uh, we're not gonna do that right now because I don't have ears on and I already have tinnitus like a mofo. So I would not like to make that worse. I also like the folder too, because it doesn't have like a button press or anything. You just rip it out and it, you know, back to being fixed. You just have a button on the side that folds it. You know, the glorious um, <laughs> Ugg boot scar stock. God damn, I'm bleeding all over this gun. <laughs> it's fucking metal. All right. <laughs> Broad strokes, uh, you have flip up sights here, as well as a flip up front sight. You got a little lever here that you press and then rip that bad boy up. And then you have irons that you will never use because let's just face it uh, optics kick ass unless the scar kills your optics which apparently they do sometimes crimson trace is holding up fairly well so far but we'll see how that handles to higher round counts on the front you also have an adjustable gas block but let's talk about disassembly now so to disassemble your scar you hit this front pin here it's kind of like backwards on an ar-15 where normally you hit the rear one first you hit the front right here because there is no rear you just lever this down 
and then pull it out. So now you have your lower. Lower, just made of polymer, pretty pretty basic, kind of like a, almost like an HK style trigger pack there. Probably not exactly, but you know, don't get mad at me, it just looks like one. Finish taking this apart, you take our stock here, now slides through the bottom, and we can take out our recoil spring. So take this out here, and then our bolt carrier group can slide out here. Unfortunately, we have our charging handle here that is in the way, but when it goes far enough back, it can't come out here, but if it goes far enough back, it hits this little slot that can only be hit once, of course, everything is taken apart. It pops out. Really nifty. I like cool, smart design decisions like that. And now our entire bolt carrier group can slide out. So this is what we have here. It's uh, almost, you know, it's it, it looks like it should be long piston, right? Like long stroke gas piston. We have a an Air 15-ish style bolt here, just the, uh, the multi-lug setup. Um, with our cam groove over on the side. Kind of clever the way that they do that. But you think with this up front that this would be the gas piston. Of course, you know, with this being fully in a battery, it sits right up there by the gas block. I mean, it would make sense, but instead, it's, it's not long stroke like the AK, it's more like a long short stroke. So there's a smaller piston up front that actually hits the front of this, which uh, causes it to move rearward so technically short stroke but it's it's kind of like a it's a long short stroke like I've been having this whole video all right well uh, if this gentleman doesn't mind not ruining the rest of our audio we can go ahead and throw our bolt carrier group back into the gun with the charging handle back in put the stock back on the rear here wedge our lower back in push it through and we are officially good to go to make some cool, sick-ass muzzle flashes. That is so fucking neat. Dude, to get shots on target like that, I mean, I know I'm not super fucking far away, but fast follow-up shots on a 308, like, that, that's... It's a smooth gun. It's cool. I like it. I remember it from my childhood. I always fucking wanted one. I was too fucking broke. I just couldn't. The Scar Heavy, the Scar 17S, it fucks. I like it. I don't care if it has a little problem in the cold. Who amongst us doesn't have a little performance issues in the cold? The fact of the matter is, I genuinely like this gun, I think it's really neat, and I live in fucking Texas. If it gets below zero degrees here, I'm gonna fucking move to Costa Rica. Or if I commit, like, several felonies and need to leave the country, I will also move to Costa Rica. It's perfect urban camouflage. No one will be able to find a fucking Herrera in Costa Rica. <laughs> Man. So thoughts about the SCAR-17. Uh, do I think I can make claims like it is a uh, long-term, reliable combat rifle, uh, or that uh, I can refute any of the claims made about it? No, no, absolutely not. Um, I probably have a few hundred rounds to this weapon system in general. Uh, I'm in no position to be making any sort of claims about long-term reliability, you know, uh, torture tests, whatever. However, I am in the position to be able to claim things like, I think it's dope as fuck, and I genuinely, genuinely like this gun. As an AK guy, is this my normal, you know, cup of tea? Uh, no, but as an avid collector of firearms and lover of firearms of all shapes and sizes, this has earned its spot in my heart and on my wall. If you guys have any other guns, weapon systems, whatever you'd like me to take a look at, go ahead and leave the comments down in the, uh, down in the comments where the fucking comments are. Long stroke, stroke strong. Bames non just having a strong called the bondulence. But I do hope you guys did like this video. Be sure to subscribe. Make sure you're part of that hashtag AKG notification squad by turning that bell on so you actually get notifications when we post videos. We got some cool stuff planned for you guys. Wish I could spoil it, but I can't. Got some cool shit in this next month or two. So anyway, 
That's all I got for you guys today, and I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks, guys. Food is my obsession to make the perfect weapon Like us Putin's rise to the top But I can't let you can stop your 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 stop Yes, the results of Grantham's ice test video have had SCAR-17 owners all over the internet in a mad frenzy to throw their rifles on, uh, fuck. Now, you know my heart obviously belongs to the 7.62x39, but 7.62x54, uh, fuck, I was gonna say 54. If you're not sure where to start out in, if you're not sure where to start out in the fire, fuck. As you can see, we've done quite a few improvements to it, uh, and honestly, I'm excited to shoot it. The factor, the factor, fuck.